While everyone's watching startups build autonomous agents, the real agent revolution is actually underway inside the world's biggest enterprises. So what exactly are they building and who is winning this business agentic war and what does it mean for you if you are an AI delivery professional? Hey friends, I'm Ahmed. I help professionals deliver AI that actually works. In this week's AI news for delivery professionals, here's what we're covering. What is actually going on with the largest enterprises with respect to the adoption of agents? I explain what this means and we'll take a look at exactly what the impact of this is on AI delivery and specifically which areas of the AI delivery lifecycle are most impacted and what to do about it. Also, if you are part of an AI delivery team, please share this with your teammates so that you're all familiar with what's going on and are clear on what changes you all need to make. So let's have a look and see what is actually going on. But to do that, I want you to come back with me to 2022. And what I'm gonna show you in just two minutes is gonna absolutely shock you. Because on the 30th of November, 2022, we all know ChatGPT launched and everyone was stunned. So this was pretty much our B2C AI moment, if you like. If you're a consumer and you need to get a job done, almost doesn't matter what it is. As long as it requires any information, then it can help. Help with writing a book, gardening, your aching back, your broken car, your bad moods, your emails, your holidays, doesn't matter. But if you wanted to use it at work, to reply to an email, for example, you'd have to copy it from ChatGPT and then paste the response back. Often, we refer to that as shadow AI, which has its own significant issues, and that's probably a topic of another video. But essentially, that really was about the extent of your B2B AI. I mean, you're using consumer AI for business purposes. And that was until September 2023, when ChatGPT Enterprise was launched with full data isolation, no prompts, inputs, or outputs being used to train or improve the model, so you had a degree of confidence that your secrets weren't gonna then be exposed onto anybody else. With a separate company workspace, which separated you out from the public chat GPT, governed by your own policies, there was some comfort that your data had a degree of protection against it. Now, on 15th of November, 2023, this is when the big change actually happened. And this is when Microsoft Copilot Studio was released because this enabled enterprises to create their own custom AI agents and automations. I mean, at the time, if you remember, people didn't even know what agents actually were at that point. But now, hold on to your seats. Look at this. This chart shows the adoption of Microsoft Copilot Studio. And look at the axis. That's not years, that is months. And now, in just a few months, we have 230,000 plus organizations that have been accounted by Microsoft, according to Microsoft, that are actually using their Copilot Studio to build their agents. Even more shocking, is Microsoft confirms that 90% of Fortune 500, as of May 2025, are using Copilot to build agents. I mean, tell me, talk to me about market dominance. I think Microsoft has really pulled a masterstroke over here. Anyway, so that's our short AI agent history. And honestly, if this was a movie, you'd say that's so stupid, that can never happen. But it has. And the question is, what kind of agents are developers and teams building? Well, actually, they, they vary quite substantially. You've got things like regulatory agents, they summarize compliance changes, classify risks, and then they can create JIRA tickets or ADO tickets based upon what you need to do. You've got financial agents extracting budgetary insights and then generating reports and sending specific stakeholders, specific relevant summaries, then you've got procurement agents auto-validating vendor documents and checking against their policy and assigning next steps. And HR co-pilots, Lord knows what they're up to. If any of you do know, 
then please educate us all a little bit and put in the comment below what they're up to because <laughs> who knows, right? Anyway, that's our reality, both exciting and scary. But the question I have is how does this affect you and real world enterprise AI delivery? Okay, and so that's what we're going to be covering in this next section. Okay, as always, I analyze the news against eight different categories and I select the top three most impacted categories. In this case, it's architecture models and tooling, governance and post live operating model. Well, the architecture models and tooling, you've got the agentic delivery tool stack, which we've just talked about, the Copilot Studio, that's evolved. And so we need to now bring, bring that in, integrate that with the rest of the delivery stack. And we also have architectural patterns and integrations we need to worry about. From a governance point of view, we need clear boundaries. And from a post live operating model point of view, once the agents go live, they don't just disappear, they persist. So we've got a lot of things to do about that. So let's look specifically for each of these different areas. What are the three things that we need to do in each of those different areas? So starting off with the architecture models and tool, we need to make sure, as I said, we bridge the agentic tooling silos. So we've got now agentic uh, tooling silo potentially with the Copilot uh, co Studio, and we've got our other delivery stack. We need to make sure that they're integrated so we don't have disparate LLM and automation tools, but rather we have a single architectural overview. We need to also create a unified visibility layer, building in control that gives your team visibility across all agents in flight, across environments, departments, and platforms. And then we also need to now have a, a approved agentic patterns being utilized because we need to establish standards, make sure that we review design patterns for the agent creation so we don't have rogue agents, you know, roaming your enterprise business processes and, uh, and unsettling your customers and your, and your internal clients. Okay. Um, area number two is looking at the governance, risk, and regulatory. So over here, we need to have a look and see. We want to make sure that we have set the guardrails and define the clear rules around what agents can and cannot do. We need to enable the audit and traceability. So every action taken by an agent is actually traceable. And we need to ensure the EU AI Act compliance. I mean, agents must meet Article 12 and 13 requirements amongst a whole others as well built-in uh, logging requirements and other user guidance on risks, etc. And there's a full series coming up on that before the 2nd of August deadline. And there's a link in, uh, for, to that playlist in the description below. So please save that and keep an eye on that because that deadline's coming up really soon. And then the third area is around a post live operating model. So over here, we need to assign agents and named owner. Every agent really does need to have some human accountable for its behavior. We set up the monitoring and alerts to catch drift and failure and unintended consequences. And then finally, including agents in ops reviews, frequent, treating them almost like teammates, right? So treat them like any other system or team member in your regular ops reviews and incident post-mortems and actually see where changes actually need to take place. Okay, so here's a question for you. Imagine you have a thousand agents running around over 500 different enterprise business processes. Are you ready to deal with that? Because that's the reality of the kind of crazy um, trajectory that we're seeing with the agents and the, uh, uh, how agents are growing in the enterprise. Have you got the infrastructure and the necessary oversight to make sure nothing goes wrong? Okay, so in summary, AI agents are spreading fast. There's no doubt about that. But let's be honest, most of us are still figuring out the tools and we're only just starting to understand how to keep these agents behaving the way we want. And with the EU AI Act kicking, kicking in in the beginning of August, it's about time we move beyond pilots and get serious about how we run this stuff for real. So if you care about getting AI delivery right, not just pushing models, but landing real responsible solutions, I cover the real world changes that matter for AI delivery teams every week. So please subscribe so that you get these new videos as soon as they're released and share this video with your team if you found it useful. Okay, thank you very much for your time and hope to see you in the next video. Take care, bye.